Am I? Cool guy. Nope. Did you them. speak to them at all? No slides. We got nothing. My editor was, was doing all this. And you, did they speak to someone in their office? I mean, that's very unlike our office. Yeah. Very, very unlike that's what, our what office. That's what he's telling me, because I just did the story. You sure they didn't call a publicity company, wrote Collins and, what are the, Rogers and Collins or whatever the hell they are? I don't know who I mean, our office, especially my office, all you got to do is get one request for a photo of me, and they're like, you'll get ten of them. Yeah. I'm I think we wanted a he wanted a slide for a cover. Oh, maybe we didn't have a slide yeah. or something. As long as you got one. Yeah. Thank you. Well, we did it. It's a nice story. I think cool. I, could, I got a lot of good response on it. Great. It's a good mic, huh? Yeah. It's going to pick all like, this up, is it? <laughs> well, we're yeah, trying yeah. it. Okay. You want to level for me, then? We can, yeah, just scoop, like, right there. Okay. You want me to come closer and just deal with it this yeah, way? Yeah, that would be Sure, great. no problem. Okay. Wait, hey, actually, what's happening, dude? Now you'll be in, so I guess you're going to have to okay. move back over here. So oh, yeah, that'd be you great. You want to just put it this way? Okay. Is that any better? Is that going to yeah. screw Mark up, though? Uh, I can just leave that. Okay. okay. Um, you got the sound everything? Yeah, Too much? Here. I'm just, I don't want it to be in the frame. You know. Let me put it down? And, yeah. To help it out? Mm -hmm. There we go. Yeah, there we are. Okay, well, let's okay. begin with uh, Black You don't mind this, do you? Not at all. Okay, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Well, Black Sabbath. Okay. What happened? We quit. Next? No. Um, what happened? Um, in a nutshell, they wanted to be the opening act for Ozzy's two farewell shows, and I didn't. And so I didn't, and they did, and that was it. That was the end of the day. Um, my attitude was that I stopped having this band. Should we start again? You want to get rid of that crap? <laughs> I mean, is there anything fucking ever works in this fucking thing? So it's one thing after the other. I mean, we left that room over there, now there's no music inside. <laughs> So we come here and we get that pissing CB. Is it okay? Were we getting that, do you think? Slightly. It's hard to tell. With the, we're going to pick up a lot of other noise. We're going to pick up the okay. sound. All right, well, let's so start Let's start again. Really we'll start again from Black Sabbath again, Black okay? Sabbath. Okay. Uh, well, with Sabbath, the, the, we were offered to be the opening act for Ozzy and his last, what were supposed to be his farewell shows. He was never going to tour again. He was never going to play again. She, what happened? So it stopped, didn't it? Um, I didn't want any part of that. Um, I had stopped being in my own band in Dio. Uh, they had, uh, Tony had not had Tony Martin anymore, or Cozy Powell. We now had Vinny and myself and Geezer and Tony. And uh, we all gave things up to do what we thought was very important, which was to make another Black Sabbath album with those people. And uh, then when they, they felt that it was more important to make whatever money there was offered for Ozzy, um, to be the opening act for him. Uh, I totally disagree. We had started ourselves. We, all the tours we had done since we did Dehumanizer were done with us and opening acts, and that's the way it should have been to me. So I refused to do it. They, in turn, went out and incorporated Rob Helford's uh, uh, voice to do those last two shows. So it was them and somebody else that came in. That showed me how important they must have cared, you know, thought I was as a person. But it didn't matter what they thought. It was wrong to me to do that. I did not want to be part of the circus that was going to happen that night. And that circus was for them to not only be the act that went on before Ozzy, and then after Ozzy, for them to get together again with Bill Ward and Tony and Geezer and, uh, and Ozzy, which is what they did. And then they announced that they were going to have a reunion. Well, that would have meant that it wouldn't be any band with me in it anyway, or, or Vinny, so I guess I did the right thing. And then not too long after that, Ozzy decided, no, I don't want to do this. So let's face it, it all comes down to the fact that someone wanted to break this band up and they did a very good job of it. That's what, that's what happened, and all a bunch of political mumbo-jumbo, things that shouldn't have happened, but they did. Uh, do you think this could have been avoided if, let's say, four of you sit down and then talk? So of course it could have. Of course it could have. Could have it could have been avoided if they, if they, like I, had respected my opinion, like I respected theirs. I thought we were a band, but we turned out to be three people who had a vote and one who didn't. Ozzy, or uh, Vinny didn't. Uh, but Geezer and Tony and I did. Well, Geezer and Tony decided that it was going to be two against one always, and that's what happened. So I did all the things that they wanted to do until it came to that. And at that point, I said, no, I won't do it. I refuse to. And we never talked about it. No matter what you hear, no matter what they tell you, or no matter what you ever see in the press, it was never once discussed. Ronnie, why don't you want to do this? Never even asked me. Well, so I didn't tell them.
I mean, they had to care first before I was going to be involved. It wasn't my job to try to save this band. It seemed more like it was their job, job to try to destroy it. We never talked about it. And yes, it could have been saved. All they had to do was say, this was more important to us. This band is more important to us. And this band to last for two or three more albums or till the end of our careers, that's more important to us than doing two waste of time shows with Ozzy Osbourne so that we can have a reunion and make millions of dollars, which didn't happen at the end of the day anyway. So yes, it could have been solved, but it wasn't. Well, Black Sabbath as a band is still going on. What is your opinion on the current state of the band? I have no opinion about them at all. Okay, so, Dio. Um, a lot of opinions. How did Dio get to be Dio? Uh... Well, we had started actually with uh, Vinny and myself and Jimmy, Jimmy Bain. So that made it be Dio again. We could have called it something else, but with the three of us in that band, they were going to always say, the ex-members from Dio, and whatever we were going to be called, we were going to be stuck with being Dio again anyway. So. Uh, we thought, well, we'll be Dio. But at that, and then about a month after we started doing something, Jimmy, Jimmy was gone. Um, it just didn't work out with Jimmy, so he was gone. And uh, we were, you know, we wanted to be Dio again, so we were. So we were, our job was to find the right people. So we found Tracy, luckily. And then, uh, you know, probably one of our most important pieces, uh, we found Jeff, Jeff Pilsen. And it all came together very, very quickly because this band was, is very focused upon what it want, wanted to do and what it wants to do. We all wanted to make the same kind of music. We didn't want to make music about witch, witches and wizards and dragons. We wanted to make music like we now do now, which is a lot more progressive, a lot more modern. Uh, we, don't, we don't consider ourselves to be the old Dio band. We're looking, you know, we were looking forward to um, you know, what comes in five years' time. Unfortunately, Having done this so long, people who don't even ever listen to the record think, well, it's another Dio album. Well, it's not, and that's a shame. But that's the way this band came together. So Dio first with the fir three original members, and then Jimmy gone, and then Tracy and uh, uh, and Jimmy. Uh, Jimmy, why do I keep saying these things? Tracy uh, and uh, Jeff. Uh, and it's the best band I've ever played it, without a doubt. This brings me to my uh, another question. What is the difference between Dio 80s and Dio 90s? Well, Dio 80s was a band that uh, uh, 83 and 84 and 85, we were, uh, we, we invented ourselves. We were, uh, you know, a very special band with some very special people and we, we liked ourselves a lot. We were making music that was, that had no boundaries to it. We just made music and the music that we made happened to be very successful. And then we started to reinvent ourselves. Uh, another guitar player came in, Craig Goldie, who was, who I still think is a fine guitar player, but as far as um, personality situations, it just didn't, didn't work with the rest of the people in the band. Uh, so it got more difficult and more difficult. We made the Dream Evil album, which was not a happy album to make, um, followed by uh, Lock Up the Wolves, which was an album with no person left in the band, with, with the exception of myself. And so we had choices. We could, uh, after the Dehumanizer album, we could make Dio, what should we do? Let's go back to be what, what, what we were. Let's, let's uh, rewrite Holy Diver and uh, let's do um, Last in Line. But that's not what we wanted to do. We want, you know, we're musicians who look forward. We're influenced by other people that we hear, too. We don't, we don't just listen to the old things we've done. We listen to, you know, anyone from Tool to Napalm Death to, um, you know, to Obsession, to, to whomever. We listen to people, and we have to be influenced by that. This is the way music is, 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 is aiming itself, and we don't want to be stuck in all kinds of tradition. We are the band that we are traditionally anyway. We always play the same. We, are, we have traditional attitudes, but we tried to take steps that made us go left and right very quickly and do circles quickly instead of saying, one tunnel, this is what we are, we're the Dio band of old. We always said we don't want to be chubby checker, we don't want to do the twist, we don't want to do that, you know. So the difference in the band is that we're a very more forward-looking band. We, we think in terms of the year 2000 as opposed to what's going on in 94. Uh, being a traditional rocker and coming up from that type of school, how do you see the, the stage of heavy metal, hard rock, and just rock in general? I mean, you've got bands like Nathan Death, which would be unimaginable in 84 or so. Mm -hmm. Very true. And now it's possible. Well, I, 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 a lot of it is rather disappointing to me, if you'd like to know the truth. I mean, although there are a lot of, a lot of good bands out there, I find a lot of, uh, um, I find a lot of it has, has dissolved in liquid. Uh, there doesn't seem to be an awful lot of strength out there anymore. These days, traditional rock bands are uh, in a very difficult position because it's only really alter alternate rock or uh, um, grunge, for lack of a better expression, that seems to be getting most of the attention. If you're Aerosmith, you can be okay. If you're bands like Dio, or perhaps if Judas Priest were to do something again, it would find it very difficult. Um, the media have not given a lot of attention to what traditionalists have been. 
um, that in some ways has been uh, hurtful to us because we, we are a traditional band with forward ideas, except that no one gives you a chance to, 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 to really put those forward ideas forward because, again, the media doesn't give it attention. But in, in the case of Napalm Death, you're so right. In 1984, that would be unheard of. That would have been laughed off the airways. I mean, it never would have gotten past the janitor at the, record, at the, you know, at the, uh, at the radio station. But now people are more open-minded. I think that's wonderful. That's the way it should be because rules are being broken down. It doesn't have to be the same old rules. It doesn't have to be a 12-bar. It doesn't have to be uh, an introduction and a verse and a chorus and a verse and a solo and a verse and you're all done with. No, it's, it's, that's what's exciting about what music should be like today. Some of the thrash bands, I mean, some of the rhythm sections, some of the things they play are absolutely unbelievable. I mean, it's, uh, uh, some of those things should be listened to by some real old musician guys, like jazz guys, and go, wow, where did that come from? Because it's really phenomenal. It's great playing. It's wonderful stuff. And I think if you put that all together, you know, we are embarking upon a very interesting time. Uh, it's, but it's, it's, I think that a little bit of traditional rock of, of, of some of which we are, the genre, should, you know, certainly should remain. Um, that's the only, you know, sad part for me. I think, you know, traditionalism is, is good in some ways. At least it's a basis for what's going on. Uh, some of it is a little bit too over the top for me, so uh, I don't know what's going to happen to it, though. I don't know. Uh, I don't know where it's going to go. I really don't. If I knew that, you know, I'd predict the next earthquake. I really don't know. But it's an interesting time, and I'm and I'm glad that that people are making music like that. Also, I've noticed you've changed your topics as far as message, mm -hmm. lyrics. How did that you know, come from? And where's it going from? Well, because it's a world that uh, you know, it's not a very happy place. It's a world we live in that's uh, uh, just really depressing, very frustrated, very angry. Um, everyone seems to be shooting each other or, uh, you know, it's the danger of the planet blowing up, and, and, you know, within a in an ecology manner. We're, we're certainly destroying this place. There's a war every time you turn around. I mean, no one can do anything about the, the Bosnia situation. I mean, I find that the most criminal of all, of all things. We can go to Saudi Arabia. We can all hold our little flags high in Saudi Arabia because we can kick the butts of some, you know, some Iraqis who didn't stand a chance in the first place for the sake of the people who own the oil in Saudi Arabia and say, or Kuwait and say, we gave you everything, aren't we wonderful? But yet we see people dying left and right in, in, uh, in Yugoslavia. How can we let that happen? Um, so it's a world that, uh, you know, has no job opportunities for young people uh, and probably won't for a long period of time drive-by shootings, all of the things that, you know, that I'm telling you that you know, are not things that you haven't seen or anyone in this world hasn't seen. And it couldn't allow me to talk about dreams and everything's going to be wonderful and the world will be happy. But just, you know, work hard and your dreams will come true. Shit, I look at the world around me now and I see that that's pretty impossible to happen. So I couldn't in my conscience write about dreams and happiness when I'm affected by the world around me, just as we all are in this band. We're very angry about it. So this is a... The topics on this album are topics that are very black and white, very true to life, things that, that hurt. Uh, so that's why this album is what it is. So would you say Dio is going towards from now on? Going? Where, where is it going? Yeah. Well, God knows. I mean, that's, that's a lot of that has to do with, you know, with its acceptance, really, and, and what we do, and, and, and how people view us to come. Um, it'll go as far as people allow us to go. Uh, as far as we're concerned, we're one of the best bands on the planet, and that is the truth. I'm a pretty good judge of talent and character, and I think that this is one. It certainly, is the best band I've ever played in, and it's uh, uh, it's it's just a it's a wonderful wonderful machine to be inside of. Uh, so if it if it were my uh, prognostication, it would be this band is going to be around for a long, long time, and it's going to be doing this for another ten years, and I certainly hope it will. Now we do, and I will trace your career. Okay. Before we do that, could I turn that air conditioning off? Sure, of course. And actually, Mark, if you could. Over here, so we can kind of just change the angle a little bit. And then if we're gonna hold uh, up some CD inserts, you want to get is that the secret? Just knocking that thing. Do you want to go back to it? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So then I got a little break. Did you shut it? I think so. I just hit a button. I don't know what the hell else is going on. Is it off? Yeah. So you guys almost done, or you? No, we're almost done. Yeah. yeah. So I'll give you each album and just okay. talk about it all sure. you want, all right. whatever was important. You know. Okay. Well, oh, I'm my real name, actually. Yeah, um, I did that for my folks. I thought maybe they'd like to see their real name on a record sometime. Because it was actually Ronnie Dio before we did this album, but then went to this one. I guess as I say for my folks, but that's not important. What the hell's a name? You know, um, it's a person. It counts, not the name. I mean, you can call me number one, number two, number three. It doesn't really matter, does it? This album was, uh, you know, probably the most important one for me, happiest one for me. 
because these are all the people you see on the back of these this album are people I grew up with. You know, we're from a little tiny little hometown, and we we grew up with a, with the same dream. Uh, it was the beginning for me. It was the band that uh, led me to this point. It's the band that Richie Blackmore heard and you know loved when we played with them. And uh, uh, from this band, he asked me to you know to uh, to do the Rainbow thing with him. Actually, you know, from a couple of other albums you're going to show me, it came from that. But this is the one that was most important because it started it all. Oh, is this a good, uh, well, I don't see this one before. Yeah. Oh, cool. Uh, well, you know, again, these are, uh, um, this is a time when I decided I wasn't going to be the bass player anymore, which I was in this album. That one. Uh, and uh, we replaced me with uh, Craig Gruber, who went on to play with Gary Moore and a few other people. Um, it was in Sabbath for about 10 minutes. Um, and uh, Mark Nassif, who was our, our uh, Percussionist who went on to play with a lot of a lot of people, including again Gary Moore uh, with uh, Jack Bruce. He's done a lot of things with Jack. Um, so these two albums were, you know, these were, these were the things that led to Rainbow, um, especially this album right here, Trying to Burn the Sun, which was the last one that we did with Elf, that led to more tours with Purple. Of course, these are all on Purple's label anyway. And um, from that point, then Richie asked me to do this, <laughs> which was, you know, again. You know, if we go order, you know, albums that are important, it was obviously this one first, and you know, this one second. You know, the beginning of a career, and then the beginning of another career with Rainbow. Um, this was a this was a wonderful album. Lucky again because it had had uh, three of the people who were on the back of this album who played on this Rainbow album here, uh, showing you how much I cared about them. I mean, this was a band that we were going to stay with, come hell or high water. Uh, those are the people I grew up with, and those are the people I wanted to play with. Well, at the end of the day. And rightfully so, we changed these people because they weren't fitting in with what we were doing with Rainbow. But again, the first album with Richie, and it was, you know, probably again one of the most important steps of my life because it got, gave me a chance to learn how Richie did things and uh, and how. So I learned how to do things and how not to do things. Uh, it was, you know, thanks to him, the beginning of my success. Right? Rising. Well, Rising, the album that everybody always says, yeah, this is one of the great. Uh, yeah, it was okay. This is the best album to me. This is the best Rainbow album to me. Not this one. This album is a bunch of self-indulgent shit on the second side, as far as I'm concerned. I think the first side is great. It's got real songs on it. And the second one was, hey, let's play a drum solo for 18 minutes. And hey, Richie, you can play guitar, too. Good for you. Next. Two live albums. Well, the live albums were, um, this one, this one is another. This was uh, the second one. And this was uh, the record company's way of, uh, hey, we can make more money, can't we? So let's put that out. Thank you. Next. This is a great album. This is a real album, a real live album, the way it's supposed to be. When you make the album, you go into the studio and you mix it, you don't do it all over again. This was what you heard was what you got. It was really important. Uh, this was not a money-making scheme. This was an album we were proud of because it showed how good the band was live. And we were a great band. It's a great band, really, really great band. Um, again, this one, you know, somebody made money from this one, I assume, made in Germany. I mean, don't even know what's inside of this one. I mean, did they even put put a picture of me in it? Probably not. I got one picture. Oh, that's pretty good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. See, I see Richie's in it, though. If I seem dis disappointed in this, it's because I've always been a person who believed in a band. I believe in all the people in the band. That you can't make this album only with that guy in the front. I didn't put this on the cover. This was on the cover of one album. This was on the cover. I didn't do that. It's not up to me. If it were me, this wouldn't have been there. That would have been on the cover of this album. I mean, a band is a band. You're only as good as the people that you play with. Um, that's why live albums and things like this really disappoint me a lot. It's for the sake of telling Richie that he's still got a career. But he'll have to prove that pretty soon. That's um, Very unhappy album. Very, very unhappy album. Uh, it was getting pretty close to the breakup of the band. We changed people anyway. We got Bob Daisley in the band now, which was great. But we had an, uh, Mark Clark was in a band before that. He got aimed out very badly, I might add. Um, this was a, another uh, another chance for Richie to, you know, kick people in the teeth, I guess. Um, how did you end up, end up being Rainbow? You mean at the very end of it all? Yeah, how did this come up? Uh, I didn't want to make the kind of music he wanted to make. He wanted to be a pop star, and I don't write that way. I wanted to still have uh, roots in intelligence, and he wanted songs about love affairs. You know, there you go, Richie. Have another love affair, mate. None of your marriages worked, huh? <laughs> That's a great album.
This is a wonderful album. This is a great album made by people who really liked each other at the time. Um, I still like Billy a lot. And I don't mind the other two. You know, I have no problem with them personally. But this was an album that had a lot to prove. This band had died a severe death three albums before it. Uh, Never Say Die and uh, Technical Ecstasy and the album before it, you know, were virtually passed over. You know, I'm not coming to comment on how good or bad they were, but they were passed over. And then suddenly came this album that changed around yet again, just like um, this album here. It's, again, they're always considered to be classic albums, these two, very, very classic albums. Um, this one did the same. It, uh, it, it made Sabbath important again. It showed that these guys here were not a bunch of musical fools, that Tony and Geezer and Billy were really good players, and that they could do things that nobody thought they could do. And it, uh, it started heavy metal you know, up a little bit again. Uh, this was a great album to me. I loved making this album. It took a long time, like all Sabbath albums do, but it was one, one of the albums of which I'm most proud. This one... Uh, and this one, and now are two of the ones I'm most proud of. And you're going to show me some more here in a second, so let's go on. Bob Rules. The Bob Rules, again, a very underrated album, I thought. Excellent album. Great songs on it. Very, very well played. Produced by Martin Birch, who did, uh, of course, the Rainbow albums for us and did uh, the Heaven and Hell album. Uh, a, a great album. Again, very, very uh, underrated and, and overlooked. Uh, but the, again, kind of the beginning of the end, this one. Um, the end. This was the end. This was the end, yeah. Uh, I had really nothing to do with the end of this particular project. We started to do this one together. But because this had now become uh, a war be between uh, Tony and myself, and uh, Geezer, of course, sided with Tony, and then they thought that Ozzy, or that, uh, I can't really keep mentioning that jerk off, uh, that uh, Vinny was uh, uh, on my side for some reason, that because we were friends, that it meant that he had to be out of the band too. So, you know, when I went, Vinny had to go too. Um, yeah, this was the beginning of the end. This was an album. This is a very untrue live album. This is the album so completely unlike this album, which is an album that you play, you record, and you give it to people. This one we played and took it in the studio for six months, and everything was replayed. Not mine, not Vinny's, but somebody did. I don't know who, but that, that one, piece of shit. I gotta tell the truth, man. You know, I feel like telling the truth today. Brilliant album, brilliant album. Again, goes this one goes with Rainbow Rising and Heaven and Hell. Another album that knocked people back and went, whoa, what's this all about? Great album, great players, liked each other a lot. Vivian, wonderful player, uh, you know, burst upon the scene, this real special kind of player that he was. Um, this was a wonderful album, one of my favorites. Another great album, great album, brilliant. You know, as good as this one, probably better album than Last in Line, but maybe with just a little bit less fire, perhaps. Because uh, we were getting, you know, starting to get beginning of end time again, you know. Um, that's a shame, but personalities do have a lot, you know, to do with it. But this was a great album. The, one of the most album, fun I've had making an album. We made this album up in the, uh, the Rocky Mountains up in uh, Colorado, and it was just absolutely one of the most fun times I've ever had in my life. Great album. Uh, Sacred I think, was a hell of an album. I thought it was a really excellent album. Another, get another underrated album, but it was a time when we would... Uh, Vivian was just about ready to fly the coop and do whatever he wanted to do. I don't know what that was he wanted to do. Um, he didn't really feel part of the band concept, perhaps. Uh, but it was a good album. It was a hard one to make because he had to draw a lot of things out of Vivian for that one. They had to kind of talk him into really playing well on this one. And it's a shame because he was so capable. Um, this was the end of the Vivian era. And of course, in the middle of this tour, we did two tours with this album. And in the middle of that tour, Vivian was gone after Christmas time, and then Craig Goldie came in. Craig Goldie now will be playing on this album, the Dream Evil album, which again was another unhappy album. Unhappy because the rest of the guys in the band weren't convinced that Craig Goldie was the right player for this band. Uh, and perhaps at the end of the day, he wasn't. Uh, I still will always give Craig the respect that he d he's due. He's a, hell of a, he's a hell of a player. He's a hell of a musician. He, he deserved better than that from the people who played in this band. So I won't be part of that. They just didn't happen to like him. I do, and I think he's a great player, so what the hell are they know? Lock Up the Wolves, I thought, was a really exceptional album. I thought it was, a, it was, uh, it was exceptional because of all the things that we had to overcome. Uh, this album was, was written right till the, almost to the end of the day with, uh, with Vinny still in the band. And then uh, Vinny left at the end of it, and rightfully so. He just wasn't comfortable in all the changes that had been made anymore and felt that you know, it wasn't the same that we had started. So we wanted to do something else, and that's cool. So we repopulated the band. Uh, but 
we repopulated the band with a guy I think is one of the greatest musicians I've ever known in my life. He was only 16 years old when he came in a band, Rowan Robertson, a kid is a phenomenal musician. I'll never find anybody, I think, better than him as a musician. He is just the best and the greatest person I know too. He's, I love him to death. He's got a new band called Violet's Demise. It's going to do great. It's got a great album. It's going to be brilliant and he deserves all the success. Um, but it was a good album. It was a good album. But it was an album we were trying to reinvent ourselves again. You know, we were you know, more witches and wizards here and there and born on the suns and stuck here and there and it just didn't work. You know, we were living in a time that was five years past. Uh, so that's no one's fault but my own. Uh, but it was a good album and it's a great sounding album and, and it was fun to make. So there it is. Lock up those wolves. Dehumanizer, an album I thought was going to be the beginning of what, what I thought was going to keep continue to, to, to go on. I thought we'd probably all end up... Uh, finishing our careers with this album but you know like anything else with sabbath we didn't have a problem we created our own and so we created a lot this album took about a year and a half to do from beginning to end an album shouldn't take that long it just shouldn't do but you know everything got real political and um that at the end of the end of the day was you know more the reason why it ended than anything else you know that that was it was political what i told you about in the beginning with the doing the aussie shows and and at the end um no one wanted to talk about it. There was no communication. Again, no matter what anyone tells you, no matter what lies Tony Iommi or Geezer Butler have made up for themselves now, we never talked about this. We were on a bus just like this. They stayed in the back, and I stayed in the front. Sorry, I didn't want to do that, but that's the way they chose to do it. So, you know, next time, if you get a chance to talk to them, don't let them bullshit you. Don't let them say, no, I don't want to talk about it. Ask them the real questions. Did you really talk about that? Well, the answer is no. And then play them that next time. So I could talk to you guys, you never talked about it, did you? And you blew well, the best band there ever could have been on the face of the earth, you stupid assholes. That's a great album. This is the best album, I think, since Holy Diver Last in Line for Dio, without a doubt. Um, I, in my opinion, better than, than, than both of them. Better than both of them. A band is more focused in what they're doing. Uh, we all knew exactly what we wanted to do. Tracy was the guitar player that this band always should have had, always. Jeff Pilson's a bass player this band always, always should have had. Luckily, me and Vinny stayed together, so that helped a lot. This is a great album. This is a great album that's going to will go down in history as, whoa, man, what an underappreciated album. This will be the mob rules of the Dio albums, probably. And it's unfortunate because it deserved a lot more attention than it got in this world. Um, but it'll all come back, you know, it'll, it'll, it'll get its attention eventually because someday someone's going to go, gee, how come there's no good music anymore? And he'll say, well, why don't you listen to that one? You'll find out why. That's a great album, a great album. I'm most proud of this album of all the ones I've ever done. It's a great album. Is that it? They haven't made any more? Where's intermission? Hey. <laughs> Can't find it. <laughs> Can't you really? Uh, I got one. Oh, I'll finish it. Don't worry. Um, what's your opinion on... Show. Sure. Opinion on sleep. On sleep? Yeah. Sleep in sleep. general? Sleep? Yeah. I'm not really much of a sleep kind of person. I think sleep's a pretty much of a waste of time. I mean, eating and sleeping don't really make an awful lot of sense to me. I mean, you sit there and you shove things in your mouth and then, you know, not too long after that it all goes out the other end. You know, that was real important, wasn't it? I guess it keeps you alive, but sleep, no, nah, I'm not really much into sleep. I don't dream an awful lot. Uh, my dreams are dreams of the day. You know, I, I dream as a conscious person. So sleep, uh, sleep like eating to me is a necessity that I wish didn't have to be around. So, you know, four or five hours of it is enough. Another topic is hate. Uh, well, that's unfortunate. Hate is unfortunate. I, uh, I think that, that that is the reason why this world has become what it's become. Um, we have racism because of hate, not because of love. We have, uh, we have all of the bad things, I think, in this world because of hate. But we are human beings and I think once we realize that we are the cancer that's been put on this earth by whatever power there be, if there is one, I personally don't believe there is one, but we're going to talk in religion now, aren't we? Um, uh, I, I think that hate is, is a real necessity, unfortunately. I can only tell you in these terms. Without evil, there's no good. Without good, there's no evil. Without hate, there's no love. You've got to have a balance somewhere. It's, a, it's unfortunate that people hate so much, but again, we, the cancer that is humanity, have created that and it's a necessity for us. It's like eating and sleeping. But it's not something that I would condone. Hate is not, uh, is, is, is unfortunately an emotion that uh, we have to live with but shouldn't be around, but it is. And now we need two tags. Uh, the show is called Mind Melt Video. We need one regular and one evil. Okay, okay, okay. 
like high and range and stuff. Okay. Just before you do this, guys, mm -hmm. it's just that all Jeff's family are here and I need to get oh, to the back. Oh, yeah, okay. sure. Don't worry about it. Yeah, you should have just... I thought, I thought you wanted something else. Yeah, it's like, yeah, no problem. Edit we can edit. Yeah. Yeah, you got to edit out all those horrible <laughs> things I said about everybody. Yeah. Like, leave them in. I don't give a good shit. I'll tell you the truth. That's I don't. Nice. It's time that's to tell nice. the truth, you know? I mean, if you have 20 here, I'll play in this. That's why I ask questions. Fine. Do Please do. And, and this is what you told me exactly. You'd be like, wow, this, these are my words. Because I hate interviewers who, like, you know, you do an interview and... Did I said that? When? No. I, my attitude is I said it, you put it down there. That's exactly the way and I feel. Those are my feelings, you know? Yeah. And I don't have hate for these people. I don't have hate for Tony. And I don't hate Geezer. And I don't hate any of those people. I don't. Not at all. I'm happy we got together and we could have made some, you know, that we had a chance to make friends again. Fortunately, Geezer and I have remained friends. Unfortunately, Tony has had said some bad things about me. But, you know, I don't want to get in that, into that because I could make Tony look about that big if I wanted to. But, you know, it's to me, it's like dueling with an unarmed man. The guy's never going to have a, a weapon in his hand because he just isn't bright enough to have one. So why am I going to say those things about him, you know? I'm sorry it happened. It's too bad that they weren't smart enough to realize we had a great band there and they just threw it away. But, hey, that's up to them, you know? Let's see what happens when they come around next time without Motorhead and without a band that they thought had Ronnie Dio and Vinnie Appice in it. Let's see what they do next time. You'll see it'll be nothing. But anyway, we're going to do... Uh, okay. Mind Melt video, right? Okay, this is the nice one, right? Let me look at the camera for this yeah. one, yeah? Okay. Hi, I'm Ronnie James Dio, and you're watching Mind Melt Video, the best. Cool. No, the evil one, right? <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna turn turn the evil part on, right? Hi, this is Ronnie James Dio. You're watching Mind Melt Video, the most evil images on earth and below. Can't get any more evil than that. That's great. That's That's great. That's I couldn't fantastic. hold a pose anymore. He wouldn't stop the fucking camera. Come on, Doug. That's fantastic. Yeah, I like that. Cool. Okay. Well, yeah, that was great. And thanks again That's for you. everything. Terrific. Thank you, Mark. I mean, as always, you treat Cap. <laughs> Captain Video. Yes. Great. Cool, man. You guys are going to stay for the show, aren't you? Oh, of course. Cool. We should have had him video it. Could have used, used, used his. Uh, we could use some live footage in that. Uh, I think you'll find Wendy will not be very happy about that. No, I can't give you a yes on that one. No. That's all I got to do. I mean, she'll cut my if balls off. If you want me to videotape for you, just for personal, I'll give you a tape if you want high eight tapes. That'll be cool. You know, I mean. Yeah, we could do that. High, high